Hey basketball fans, welcome into NBA Now by Chat Sports. I'm your host Harrison Graham. Got some news and rumors, especially trade rumors, to get into on today's show. So we'll go ahead and we'll jump on in right now. Let's get to the latest Lakers news and rumors. Anthony Davis. Let's talk Anthony Davis injury update here as AD is set to miss uh, the next two or three weeks with a calf strain. Now, L.A. clearly dodged a bullet here as this could have been a lot worse. It could have been a torn Achilles, uh, but that is not the case. That being said, the Lakers need to take things slow as they work through this with Anthony Davis because this has been a lingering issue now for a few weeks as he's been dealing with a sore Achilles. Luckily, it's just a calf strain, but uh, if I'm L.A., I'm definitely not rushing things with A.D. because he is a prime possession for this basketball team, and you are not going to repeat without him. He's going to give you 22-10 and 10 on most nights, if not 25-10 and 10, once he's back and fully healthy, having another efficient season for the Los Angeles Lakers. The Lakers need to be patient. Yeah, it's easier to win games when he's out there, even if he's not 100%. That being said, you just got to take this slow. You can't rush it. The Lakers had a shortened offseason, especially compared to other NBA teams. It was already a shortened season, but especially now uh, with the uh, you know the extended season last year, this year you know didn't get as much time to rest up. Coming off the championship run, I think the Lakers need to be cautious and ta uh, and handle this the right way. And if that means it's uh, more than two or three weeks, and it takes uh, up to a month or something like that, then that's what it takes for Anthony Davis because you just can't afford to lose this guy if you plan on winning an NBA championship here in 2021. How concerned are you with Anthony Davis's injury? Scale it from 1 to 10 for me. Uh, 10 being, ah, oh, you're terrified that he's going to tear his Achilles. 1 being, you're not worried at all. I'm like a 5. I got some concern. I'm definitely more concerned than I was last time we talked about this. But as of now, not overly concerned. Hopefully this isn't a major, major issue for Anthony Davis. Let's talk trade rumors now. Blake Griffin first up here. Could the Pistons be trading Blake Griffin? Well, they're going to try to. They're going to sit him for now uh, to avoid injury as they explored a possible trade for Blake Griffin. The problem is he has a tough contract to trade, and he's dealt with a lot of injuries in recent years, so it's going to be tough to uh, find a trade partner for him. A buyout may be more likely for Blake Griffin at the end of the day. We'll just have to wait and see. Now, Blake has played okay this year, but he's certainly been very inefficient, under 37% from the field, but a good creator for a big four assists there, grabbing five rebounds, but he's certainly not what he once was. There's no doubt about that. Now, as far as actually finding a trade partner for him, uh, an NBA executive had this to say. I know they've been trying to trade him for months and can't find a taker. Part of it is Blake also saying there are certain teams he would prefer to go to, which, you know, limits the teams, obviously. This is a weird one. Non-zero chance that they buy him out, which seems crazy, which means, yeah, there's a greater than 0% chance that the Detroit Pistons could just cut their losses and try to work out a buyout with Blake Griffin and say, hey, we appreciate your work in the past, but uh, we're just going to go in a different direction here. We'll help you out. You help us out. All is well for both parties involved. And it makes sense, right? Because Detroit is certainly rebuilding. The problem I run into in terms of a trade is who wants that contract? I don't know if anyone wants that contract, which is why I think at the end of the day, a buyout's going to end up being much more likely for Blake Griffin. And, uh, you know, we'll see what develops over the next few weeks. Maybe a team toward the NBA trade deadline uh, steps up to the plate, but I'm just not super confident that that will end up happening. I do think he'll draw some interest among uh, – if he gets bought out among several teams. I think the Boston Celtics make a lot of sense. They still need a big. They could certainly uh, benefit from a guy like Blake Griffin. How about the Brooklyn Nets? We know they're going to be involved anytime a major name becomes available. They're not going to trade for him, but if he gets bought out, I think that's possible. Golden State, same deal. I don't think they'll trade for him, but I think they'd be interested if he gets bought out. And then the Lakers, they can't afford his big contract, but he gets bought out. You bring him, uh, you sell him on trying to win a championship. It'd be weird after all the time he played with the Los Angeles Clippers, but I think he'd be very fired up to try and play for a contender uh, toward, you know, the back half of his career at this point. What do you guys think will happen? Predict it for me. What will happen with Blake Griffin? Type T if you think he'll get traded. Type B if you think he will get bought out. What is the more likely scenario when it comes to Blake 
and the Detroit Pistons. I think he gets bought out, but I'm curious what you guys have to say on this one. Now get subscribed to the channel because we have the latest news, rumors, trade rumors. We do power rankings, some live shows as well. We cover it all here on the NBA, so go ahead and subscribe today. You don't want to miss our coverage. Uh, we're keeping you guys up to date on the latest NBA trade rumors, NBA news, injuries. We do it all here at Chat Sports. You see the link below, but just hit that big red button and subscribe so you don't miss any of our coverage here at Chat Sports. Okay, let's talk Andre Drummond now. Uh, looks like a similar situation to Blake Griffin, but also different, and I'll explain. The Cavs are moving forward with Jared Allen as, as their starting center, who they obviously got from the Brooklyn Nets, which was a nice addition in that four-team blockbuster trade when they sent out James Harden, or a part of the James Harden four-team trade, and Cleveland's clearly going younger. Now, they're going to sit Drummond to avoid injury here, which, you know, is a bummer for him because he certainly would like to play and be out there, but as of now, he's going to sit. He's averaging 18 and 13 this scene, a season. He is still productive. He could be a buyout candidate as well if the Cavs can't find a trade partner at this point in time, but the difference here is Andre Drummond is set to be a free agent next season. That is the difference here. That's why I think there's a more likely scenario that Drummond gets bought out than a guy like Blake Griffin, for example, because, you know, yeah, it's a big contract this year, about $28 million for the whole season, so, you know, $18, $19 million the rest of the way, but, you know, if it doesn't work out, he was a rental anyway. He hits the open market next year, and it's not a big deal for whatever team decides to trade for him, so... You know, keep that in mind when you debate Dr Drummond versus Griffin, whereas Griffin has that player option for next year. I like Drummond. He's more of an old-school center, but I think he could offer some stuff to some teams. So I think there's a little bit more of a trade market for him, but he is, uh, you know, a back-to-the-basket, uh, a down-low post type of, guy, uh, type of center. So I don't think a ton of teams will show trade interest, but I do think it's at least possible, whereas with Blake, I think it's really unlikely. Now, there are a lot of teams that could benefit from Drummond as well. Some of the similar teams from earlier. The Celtics still need a big. I think they could make a move, whether it's in the buyout or trade market. Brooklyn, I think Golden State, LA, same deal. If he gets bought out, I think they'd be interested. I'm not sure they would trade for him. There has been trade buzz with the Raptors in Drummond uh, for whatever reason. So we will see uh, if anything sticks there. But uh, we'll just have to see. I'm not convinced uh, that either of these guys uh, gets traded, but I do think it's more likely that Andre Drummond gets traded than does a guy like Blake Griffin. So which team will land Drummond? Let me know what you guys think in the comments section. Which team will land Andre Drummond uh, before the trade deadline or after if it is a buyout situation? I want to hear it from you guys, so go ahead and let me know what you guys think. Now, we do have some NBA jerseys on sale at chatsports.com slash NBA jerseys. All 30 teams, yes, Laker fans, we got LeBron jerseys, uh, these uh, alternate ones, but also the traditional gold and purple ones as well. There's Kobe jerseys available also, so go check those out. Chatsports.com slash NBA jerseys. We got Celtics jerseys. We got Warriors jerseys, including some of the new ones that are on there as well, I believe. So go check that out at chatsports.com slash NBA jerseys. A lot of these are on sale. Go check it, take advantage of this deal. That link will be in the comments. It'll be in the description. Get yourself a jersey for your favorite team or your favorite player today. Don't miss out on this opportunity. Okay, let's talk Kimball Walker trade rumors as we get into the latest Celtics news and rumors. I think this could be uh, something that actually happens. Now, Kimba has struggled uh, so far this season. Obviously, he started the year banged up. But he's played 10, 12, 15 games now, and he just hasn't really picked it up. You look at the numbers here real quick. 16 points. Yeah, that's okay. 4-4 four and four when it comes to rebounds and assists. Here's where you have red flags. Uh, shooting 36% from three, uh, shooting low from the field as well. You know, that's that, those aren't great numbers for Kimball Walker. He hasn't been very efficient so far this season. Hopefully he picks it up very, very soon. Uh, if he doesn't, though... I think a trade could be on the table because the Celtics have been struggling as of late. They got to mix something up. They're about 500 now. Uh, we've mentioned a lot on this show that the Celtics need a big. Maybe Kimball Walker can be a trade chip as they try to do that. And I'll just be frank. If I'm the Boston Celtics, I'm shopping Kimball Walker. I would shop Kimba Walker if I'm Danny Ainge. You've got a lot of assets in draft capital. Ship out Kimba and some picks and get some uh, fresh talent in here because Kimba's not part of your long-term future. He's over the hill at this point. He's over 30. Is he still a good player? Yes. Is he a cornerstone? 
I don't believe so. I really do not think Kimball Walker is a cornerstone player at this point in his career. And if he's not, then you got to try and find someone who is to team up with Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. Because these are your two guys that are going to be key cogs on your roster moving forward, both averaging over 25 points per game. Kemba, yeah, 16 points. Inefficient, though. Hasn't played well since before the bubble last year. So that's a lot of games at this point. Uh, Marcus Smart, Daniel Tice rounding out your top five scorers there. But you need more. You need some fresh energy, I think. I, I, I'll continue to say it. The Celtics need to get a big in here if they want to be a legitimate contenders in the Eastern Conference. That's just what I believe. And if you have to part ways with Kemba Walker to do that, I think it's more uh, than reasonable to do that because, like I said, Kimba's not the same guy at this point. We have a large sample size dating back to last year of Kimba not playing at that high of a level. So I do think it's possible that uh, the Celtics could look to go in a different direction at point guard. Maybe you start Marcus Smart at point guard and you trade out Kimba Walker and get a big in here. I definitely think it's a very, at least decent possibility. Should the Celtics trade Kimba Walker? Type Y for yes, type N for no. I want to hear from you guys on this one. Should the Boston Celtics trade Kimba before the NBA trade deadline? Get your votes in on that one right now. Let's talk Golden State news and rumors. How about signing Jeremy Lin? Remember him? Remember the Warriors had a deal for him fall through before this season? Well, maybe uh, both uh, sides deserve a second chance here. Now, Golden Star Jeremy Lin has been playing for Golden State's G League team, the Santa Cruz Warriors. And, you know, small sample size so far, but he's looked pretty darn good. And I think Golden State could certainly use another playmaker uh, to take some pressure off of Steph Curry. Look at what uh, Jeremy Lin has done in the G League so far. It's only four games, but 18 points, over seven assists. He's grabbing a couple of rebounds per game as well. 47.3% from three. That's an impressive clip. Now, he's not going to shoot that high of a number if he gets onto an NBA roster, but that being said, that's pretty efficient for Jeremy Lin, and I like the playmaking as well at over seven assists per game. That's pretty darn impressive also for Mr. Lin. So, hey, we know for a while he's been trying to return to the NBA. He's been connected to the Warriors. He's playing for their G League affiliate. I think a, 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 a signing could make some sense for both parties, if for nothing else, to say, take some pressure off of Steph Curry, who's having another outstanding season for Golden State at over 30 points per game. Sure, you got Andrew Wiggins and Kelly Oubre who picked up the scoring a little bit here, but those aren't playmakers. Those aren't guys who are going to give you three, four, five assists a game. They're more ISO scorers, and even Steph to a certain extent is as well. You need another guy in there who can run the offense, come off the bench, be that backup point guard because – you know, uh, you don't really have that in Brad Wanamaker, for being completely honest. Now, I, look, it's possible you'd call up uh, Jeremy Lin, and he's just, you know, he's just not that good, right? He hadn't played in the NBA in quite a while, but if I'm Golden State, it is something I'm definitely at least exploring uh, if this continues, if he continues to play at a high level in the G League. Again, different level of competition. I'm not going to sit here and say Jeremy Lin's going to come back to the NBA and average 15 and 5 or something like that, but. Could he give you a little bit of a spark? Could he take some pressure off Steph Curry? I think it's at least possible, and if it's possible, I definitely think it's something that they should explore. So we'll leave you. Uh, we'll ask you this question: Should the Warriors sign Jeremy Lin? Type Y for, or type S for sign. Type P for pass. Get your votes in. Should Jeremy Lin end up with the Golden State Warriors? Go ahead and vote on this one.